So from the east coast to the west coast, let's get it. Quick update here, we just landed in Charlotte. It's the following day. Um, we're gonna go land in LA in about six hours. Yo, what's up guys? So I'm finally back on the YouTube grind. Um, this this camera is actually heavier than my old one, so like I'm getting a pump in my shoulder in the morning, which is kind of weird. Um, I don't even have to work out. But anyways, um, yeah, I'm finally making YouTube videos and this one's gonna be about bulking. So I gained about 30 pounds in the past six months, six to eight months, and most of it was relatively lean. I'm not saying it was all muscle, but I kept it lean. Um, I'll toss in some clips here. As you can see, I stayed pretty lean and it was a successful bulk to say the least. Now, um, I'm on my way down to cut. I know I was starting like a summer shredding episode series, um, but honestly, I wasn't happy with how I was looking at the like end of my bulk at that time, so I just extended it. I know it's summertime and I should be like shredded, but um, honestly, like, like social media makes it seem that way, but like, I think truly you have to be in a surplus for a long period of time to really reap the benefits of a bulk. So that's what I did. I didn't really give a shit about all that um, because I know once I do cut down, I'll look pretty good. So I threw in those videos of me in LA, just like short little clips. Um, I wasn't able to film much out there, um, fortunately. So I kind of like made a few videos and I wanted to make this like little comment or you know, little address this thing. One of those times where you're in a position that you never would have thought you would have been in and it's because you did something that you were never comfortable to do and I want everybody to realize like if I can do it, I was like really insecure about being in front of a camera and talking like even now I get nervous like it's hard for me but like if I wouldn't have decided to like make a fitness page or start a social media account, I would have never met or lived with Bradley Martin for a week or you know, flew out to zoo culture and met some amazing kids that have like followed me. And it was just a really surreal experience. And um, you know, like you just gotta chase your dreams. And to be completely honest, I don't wanna sound cheesy or anything, but you gotta be able to do things that aren't comfortable with you. So by talking about this, this is gonna, I'm gonna watch this, I'm gonna correlate this. When you bulk, you're not gonna be comfortable with the way you look probably. You're gonna be like, oh, like I look soft. I'm putting on fat, but it's all part of the process. Trust me, like under that fat is a bigger, better version of what you were before. And that's the mindset that you gotta have. Long story short, if you wanna get yoked and you know, you wanna look different next summer or you wanna put on more muscle or you're just not happy with where you're at, um, just keep watching this video and you know, it's only gonna help you hopefully um, because it really helped me through the things that I've done and I wanna share that with you guys because you guys support me at the end of the day so let's get right into it I'm actually gonna go get a coffee because I have a stim problem I literally like I can't start my day without caffeine I don't know if anybody else is like that it's, it's a problem so yeah I'm just gonna go get a coffee I'll show you guys what I get and uh, we'll go from there hit a workout and yeah let's get it all right so just got back from Starbucks while sitting in the parking lot gonna show you guys what I get um, grande Nitro Cold Brew, two stevias, sugar-free vanilla, light almond milk, and light ice. Um, I do this because it's probably only 15 calories, and I get another um, cup of ice just to really like fill up the cup and you know make it seem like I'm drinking more coffee. Fun fact: um, if you want like the closest drink to your pre-workout, like per milligram, um, Nitro Cold Brews are the strongest coffee that Starbucks makes. So this is like 200 milligrams. Um, which is like not even one scoop of BPM, but it's all right. Um, I wanted to switch it up mm. If you guys are watching this and you go out to Starbucks and you get this drink um, Throw it on your story and tag me on Instagram um, I'll throw it up on mine because we're gonna start like a little cult
All right, guys, so we're back from working out. Um, had a really good workout, to be honest. I'm down about four and a half pounds, so I'm low on calories and I'm starting this cut. I know it's a little too late because, you know, it's summer and I'm not shredded, but like I said, um, it's gonna be worth it in the end because I don't plan on bulking this hard ever again. Well, maybe, we'll see. Let me know what you guys want me to try next once I finish this cut. I used to do endurance training. As you guys know, if you're an OG, I ran a half marathon. And I biked uh, uh, metric century, which is 62 miles in one day. So I kind of like all aspects of fitness except, well, CrossFit's okay, but I don't know if I'll ever do it. I'll try it, but I don't know if I'll ever do it. Um, but yeah, we're gonna hop right into this video and show you guys exactly why you clicked on this. And I'm gonna bring out like a whiteboard and I'll write down visually so you can see like exactly what I did, screenshot or whatever. But all right, so I got this whiteboard right here and it has everything that I wanna go over and everything that I wanna talk about when talking about this bulk. Um, this is something that you can either do really well or you can go really bad with it. And I know a lot of people see these stories where, you know, people, go crazy and it's really hard for them to lose the weight and that's why I say to you know these tips I give you it's from personal experience because when I was younger and I bulked I didn't have a successful bulk is one of those things where I ended up putting on more fat than I did actually muscle so um yeah just want to dive right into this and show you guys what I did Real quick, before I get into this video, I don't want you guys to roast me on my handwriting. I know it sucks, so that's going to be the worst part of this video. So, um, just going to let you guys know that. But, without further ado, let's get into it. So, number one, lose your ego. So, um, I say this because when you go into a bulk, you're surrounded, in social media, you're surrounded by everybody that is shredded. They look lean 24-7, and they have a lot of muscle. And, like, when you're naturally lifting, it's almost well not almost it's basically impossible to put on a substantial amount of muscle mass without being in a slight surplus um, that's just because your body needs to feed off the surplus of calories that you have so it needs to grab something if you're not in a surplus it's not going to have the nutrients it needs to pull from when it needs it um, so like when you're surrounded and you see all your friends or whatever, you're comparing, constantly comparing yourself because everybody does it. It's life. You always compare yourself to somebody else. Um, when you see that person who might be bigger and stronger and leaner than you, you got to realize like you're different than them and your journey's different than them and you got to embrace it yourself. Like, I, like for me being on social media and posting pictures shirtless, it wasn't easy for me to just say, okay, I'm going to go bulk and, you know, gain some fat. Um, but I knew it was part of the process and I knew it was something that I wanted to experience for myself and uh, I wanted to see how my body would react. So, um, yeah, basically losing your ego is just coming down to focusing on your journey and not what somebody else looks like. Because to be honest, you could live your whole life and never look like the person you want to just because we all have different genetics. So that's number one. Um, number two. 200 to 300 calorie surplus. I'm not sure if you can see this handwriting, but I tried. All right, so when talking about a surplus of calories, you don't want to go too high because think about it. So say you're on a roller coaster, right? You're you're going up and up and up and pretend that's calories and you keep going up and up. Like that's just increased fat gain. That's, you know, there's a diminishing return and where like a surplus of calories is almost too much and you know, you're going to gain a lot of fat more than muscle. And that's when I kind of like to say less is more. So when you're bulking, try to like be relatively conscious about how much you're eating. So what I did was I tracked for two weeks straight, the first two weeks of the bulk. And I got into my ballpark of calories, which was 3,600 calories was my surplus in which I would gain a pound to two pounds every week. So that was like the 200 to 300 calorie surplus I was talking about because my maintenance is around 3,400, um, 3,300, depending on how active I am. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go find your maintenance calories. As that's what I'm trying to say. So type in, literally go into Google, type in maintenance calories. That calorie count of like just pure maintenance, add 200 to 300 calories to that. And if you want to gain more weight, like say that's not even working, just up the calories until you find that sweet spot where you're not too bloated and you're not too lethargic, but you feel like you're still putting on some um, quality muscle and, and you're still gaining some weight. 
Um, it's really trial and error. I can't sit here and tell you what's perfect for me because it's not going to be perfect for you because we're both different humans and that's just how it works. But yeah, 200 to 300 calorie surplus is going to be a sweet spot. I think you can really gain a lean amount of muscle and kind of like avoid, not completely avoid, but avoid a lot of the fat gain because a lot of people when they go on a bulk, they just said, they're like, F it, I'm going to eat as much as I can. And that's really fun until you have to cut because then it's like that roller coaster. You're you're at 300 feet and you got to cut all the way back to ground zero. Whereas if you would have gradually went up and say you 150 feet, that roller coaster only has to go down half of that. So that's just my outlook on that. Um, and that's the reason why I say to take it slow. Next, we got, all right, here's my bad handwriting. It's probably, I don't even know if you can read it. Um, all right, next is stick to whole foods, 80-20. Um, so a lot of people probably have no idea what I mean by 80-20. Basically, you're going to eat 80% of the foods in the day as a clean food source. So like chicken, rice, um, whole wheat bread, um, wraps, just stuff like that, um, beans, just really like healthy food that's going to fill you up but also has a lot of nutrients. And then at night, what I did was... I would use the other 20% after I finished my last like whole food meal where I, you know, the, throughout the whole day I eat healthy. At night, I would have a treat of normally like 400 to 500 calories, which would be either ice cream, um, candy sometimes, stuff like that just to really like satiate me and enjoy the bulk. Um, I use a lot of honey and peanut butter sandwiches. I really like peanut butter, so like mixing honey in that is super good. I don't know if you ever tried it, but uh, I like PB&Js too. Those hit the spot at night um, and bowls of cereal, all that stuff. Like you don't have to be crazy strict as long as you get your protein in and you get your other macronutrients in. I only track protein, but the rest will normally fall into place on a bulk. You don't have to stress too much as long as you're getting your calorie allotment. So um, yeah, next, sleep. Um, so sleep is super important when we're talking about like recovering a lot of people don't realize like when you're sleeping That's when your body can focus on internally. So like during the day you're moving your body's like your metabolism is going So your body's trying to digest food because you're normally eating so it's focusing on food um, Digestion it's focusing on like just like staying active, you know like thinking and your body, when it goes to sleep, it can really focus on the internal system. And that makes sense as to why you would grow if you get more sleep because your body is at rest. Um, there's literally like no gravity besides like you're not standing up. That's why they say like when you stand up in the morning, you're actually taller because the gravity doesn't compress your spine. So I think, I think truly like when you're laying in bed at night and you're asleep, your body's calm and it can really like focus on repairing itself and growing. And that's just my opinion. As you can see, my uh, four tips before this have like a trend of taking it slow. And that's the final tip of taking this bulk as a successful bulk, which would be to go slow. And I say this because it's a marathon, not a sprint. When we talk about muscle building and we talk about training and, you know, like if everything was fast and if everything was easy, everybody would do it. Um, so when something comes so fast, it's normally not good. And you know, Rome wasn't built in a day and I hate to be cheesy, but I always think about that. Like anything fast can go away fast. I just think like the whole reason why people don't like to take stuff slow and I personally used to be like this and I really fixed it and worked on it because I was a very impatient person. Like when I wanted something, I wanted it now. But something I realized is you gotta enjoy the process. Like when you're cutting or when you're bulking, you gotta like those nights that you know like say you're force feeding like you're gonna remember those nights like you're gonna be like damn i really put in the work and it's gonna be much more rewarding than if you just said oh screw it i'm gonna eat as much as i can and you know you it's just a lot different like when you take full control of what you do and take um a lot of pride in what you do over a long period of time when you look back at that that's gonna be a lot more rewarding than if you were just like uh oh, you know i'm gonna go bulk or you know like oh i'm just gonna go cut and you don't have like any like control over yourself so i think by taking it slow you gain control you gain a lot of pride in what you do and lastly it just teaches you to love the process because if the longer you can endure something and this is just 
common sense. It just shows how tough you are. Like if you want to back out when it gets hard, like that just shows a lot about your character. So, you know, like if, if you want to go into something and do really well at whatever you want to do, it, you just got to take it slow. Embrace the process. Like everybody says, like fall in love with the process. That's what it comes down to. So that's going to be the end of this video. I know I haven't posted on YouTube in a while, but I just got this new camera and I hope the quality comes out good because I do like it. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna try and post more. If you guys have any recommendations, drop them in the comments below and just let me know what you guys wanna see. And lastly, if you can, I'd really appreciate it. Hit the thumbs up, um, support your boy. You know what the deal is, corn fed. Um, I wanna really like make a difference and help you guys out. So um, yeah, give this a like thumbs up, subscribe. I appreciate every single one of you guys. I'm gonna wrap it up. My back is killing me. I don't know what the hell I did to it. But, have a good one. Um, you know what the deal is, it's a bad day to be a weight.